Welcome back, SOLIDWORKS community, to the final video of this three-part series on Pinewood Derby Racing. We have optimized the design and ran virtual tests. So let's see if our assumptions match reality. Let's take a look. The final design that we decided on was the one that won our virtual race. When the build day came, we got a bunch of kids together so that everyone had the same tools and parents that could help out. In this project, like in so many, the design needed to be altered during the build process. The first thing that had to be altered was the overall shape, even though we had templates to build off of. This was mainly due to the hand tools that we had available, as well as my son himself doing a fair amount of the building of the car. These two factors altered the design itself since the geometry would not be exactly the same. The next change came because we were unable to find a place to purchase the originally designed weights where we could get them shipped before the race. So we needed to purchase some different weights. The new weights were zinc and not tungsten, and were also larger since zinc is a less dense material. Because of this, we had to put the weights all over the car, wherever we could find space. Then we covered it with duct tape to try to make it more aerodynamic. Finally, we painted the car. Here is a 3D scan of the final design. I want to thank my SOLIDWORKS reseller, Trimec, for helping with the scan. As you can see, the next obvious design change is that there are only three wheels. I wish I could say that it's because of some great design discovery, but it's actually due to my son losing one of them. Let's compare the original design to the final build. We can see where the geometry differences are if we make the scan transparent. You'll notice that the wheels on the scan are at angles. This is for two reasons. First, I thought we could be clever with the design and have the front wheel ride the rail, theoretically limiting the potential friction to something that we could control rather than the car bouncing back and forth down the track. The second reason, and really the more important one, is that we didn't have a wheel alignment tool, so we just kind of guessed. Now that the new 3D model is close to the scan, let's run another motion study to compare the original design to the 3D scan and the as-built 3D model. I have set up the same motion study as we did in the second video, just with our three designs, the original design, the as-built 3D model, and the actual scan. As we run the motion study, we can see that all of the cars are pretty even at the beginning, as they transition to the flat part of the track is where things get interesting. Only the original design seems to stay straight on the track and the other two are now unstable. As they move towards the finish line, we can see the 3D scan almost falling off the track and the as-built model barely making it across the finish line. Now, let's see how the design held up in the real race. There were four heats all which we didn't end up doing so well in. Looking at the races, we can see that the car was becoming unstable as it hit the flat part of the track in almost every race. This mirrors what happened on the motion study. If I had made a model of the as-built car and run the motion study before the race occurred, then I would have known the issues in the design up front, and hopefully could have made some changes. In the end, this was a fun project for the kids to learn some new stuff, and it was another opportunity to showcase the abilities of SOLIDWORKS.